What's up guys, Jay here, and in this video I'm actually going to be fulfilling a request that I received quite some time ago, and that is showing you how to program the Poker 3 keyboard by Vortex. So I went ahead and put this video together because the Poker 3 is such a, uh, such a popular mechanical keyboard and because to the newcomer it can be a little confusing, a little difficult to learn how to program it. So I figured I'd put together a quick little primer. I'm actually curious as to how much, how many of you guys actually use mechanical keyboards, what you guys think of them. How many of you actually use programmable keyboards? Uh, let me know in the comments. I'm kind of, kind of curious to see how that, how that turns out and what you think of them in general. Do you think they're a good idea? Do you think they're just a complete waste of money? Personally, I love my keyboard. I love the small form factor. I love being able to program it and have it do whatever I want to do and just be able to keep my hands within such a small space all the time and if essentially do almost an unlimited amount of, amount of things with the keyboard. Uh, and then just have to move my arm a short way to use the, the mouse itself. But anyway, I don't want to stall too much, so let's get into the actual main point of the video. So the first thing that I'm going to show you are a couple uh, websites that make it really helpful for programming the poker itself. So the first one that we have is the Keyboard Layout Editor, and that's at keyboardlayouteditor.com. And there will be links in the description leading to both of these pages that I'm going to show you. So the first one, keyboardlayouteditor.com, I have the basic key layout of the poker right here. And this is really useful because as you edit it, you can save it and it will save a new version every time you... Uh, every time you edit it so that you can always go back to the previous version. So this version, this default poker layout, will always be at this URL. So this way, as you're editing your keyboard layout, as you're programming your keys and whatnot, you can keep track of exactly what everything is and, uh, and, and it just makes it a lot easier to, uh, to, to remember and to, to go about things. <clears throat> so this is the first thing, the second, uh, page will be the poker user manual and this is very concise it's a little cryptic it goes over the steps on how to program the keyboard and uh, some little things here and there and then all of the default keys and default programmings as well as for the uh, RGB version of the poker and the dip switches but I will be going over and demonstrating all of the programmability and how to do everything with the with the poker so that you can actually visually see it. Uh, but just so that you know, this uh, user manual will be linked as well in the description and it's a good reference to have. So before we actually start going over how to program the poker, there are a few things that we need to know. So the first thing is how the function layers work. So there's the default layer, which is all of the normal uh, key caps. So every key that you would just press that has a one-to-one -one key press. So when I press the one key, it's a one. When I press the J key, it's a J. When I press the space bar, it's a space. Now there's also a function layer. So when I actually hold down the function key, it switches all these keys into a different layer, or at least most of them. And the way this works is if there's something programmed or if there's something on the, programmed onto the function layer for these keys, then that will switch. So as you can see, the, uh, the default, now this is the original poker. I think some of the newer ones have these keys with uh, default functions set. So we can see that at least all of the numeric keys here are duly mapped to the, uh, to the function, to the F keys. So when we press the function button, it switches over the layer on the keyboard to where now this key press will be an F1. Now this, now the J will be the uh, left arrow, K will be the down arrow. So that's basically how the function layer works. Okay. So in addition to the just function key switching to the function layer, the poker is made with four other uh, programmable layers. So there's the default layer, and then layer two, three, and four. And those are shown with these keys. So you can see here, we have the default, we have layer two, layer three, and layer four. And to switch to these layers, we use the function key, as indicated by the, uh, the value on the front of the keys. 
So right now we're on the default, and we can actually tell which layer we're on by how the uh, LED here is lit up. So right under the space bar here to the left, there's an LED, and there's actually one on the right as well. But the LED on the left shows us which layer we're currently on. So default layer is no LED. Layer two would be blue. Layer three turns red. And layer four is purple, but it's technically half red and half blue, as you can kind of see here. So to start with, the default layer itself is not programmable. So to program key presses, we need to switch to either layer two, three, or four. So before we actually start programming anything, there are a couple functions that are really useful to know. The first function is the, uh, the layer reset. So suppose we're on layer two, as indicated by the blue light here, and we mess something up and we want to reset just this layer. So let's say we have something programmed on layer two and layer three. Layer three we want to leave alone, but we've messed up layer two, so we just want to reset layer two itself. So what we do is we hold down the function key and then the R key, and you can see it says reset right here, and we'll see the light will start flashing. And it'll do this for five seconds, and once it turns solid, this layer has been reset. Now sometimes things will get a little messed up and you might have to reset the entire board back to its base state, back to its factory state. To do this, all we have to do is hold down each of the Alt keys at the same time. We'll see that light starts flashing again. And it'll go for five seconds. And this time it turned off, indicating that it's been reset to the default layer. And now all of the keys are back to their default settings. So now we're going to get into how to actually program key presses on the poker. So when programming the poker keyboard, there are a few things that you can't do or that you are restricted from. So one is programming on the default layer. When you are on the default layer, none of the keys can be programmed. Second is once you actually switch to one of the programmable layers, all of the layer keys, so the default layer two, layer three, layer four, none of these four keys can be programmed ever. Finally, the function and program keys cannot be programmed themselves, but they can be moved elsewhere on the keyboard. So to program key presses into the poker, we need to put it into its programming mode. And to do this, we press the function key and the right control key. So if I press both of these, you can see this other light, this other LED light on the right side lights up. That indicates that we're in the programming mode. Now, if we leave it in programming mode without doing anything for 15 seconds, it will time out and go back out of the, uh, into the regular mode. So as you can see there, it just switched back. So now there are two kinds of key presses that we can program. One is a direct key press, so we can program any key to do anything that we want as just a single key press on that key, or we can program the function layer of that key to do whatever we want. So for instance, with the I, J, K, and L keys being the arrow keys, if we hold down function and hit those, those are the function layer of those keys. So we'll start with something basic and just program single key presses. So let's suppose on layer two, we want to program the WASD keys to be arrow keys. So first we would enter in, back into the programming mode by pressing function and control. And then we'd press the key that we want to program. So A, we're going to program to be our left arrow. Now we can see the lights blinking. That means we're programming a key. And then once we press the key that we want to program or the key or the uh, function layer that we want to program, we press what we want to program it to. So in this case, we're going to program the A key to be the right arrow by pressing function J for the right arrow key. Now we're still blinking. So then we press the program key to lock that in. You can see we are, we have a solid light, but we're still in the programming mode. So now to exit the programming mode, we press function right control again. And now we have programmed the A key 
to be the right arrow. So now to program the other keys, when we're actually in the programming mode, we don't have to uh, exit the programming mode after programming every key. Once we press the program key to lock in that, that programming, we can program the next key press. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate programming the rest of the keys. And so I will bring up a, say notepad here and show the uh, moving around using the WASD keys. So add in some spaces. Now you can see I'm pressing WAS and D and I am navigating around these spaces in the, oops, accidentally hit the E key. But I'm nav navigating around the spaces in the notepad here. So in addition to one-to-one -to -one key presses, we can program the keys or the function layer of a key to do a number of events, actually up to 32 different key presses within one uh, programming. So we can do things like, and there are also, which if we look here, you can see the T, G, and, and B keys have these delays marked on them. So we have 15 milliseconds, 0.1 seconds, and 0.5 seconds. And the way that these work is when you're programming an action, if let's say you're, you're uh, programming in a key press to open up some program and then do something within that program, you can actually program in a delay to wait for the program to open until you continue doing those key presses. And when you program in, when you program in the delay, each of these keys adds that much time to the delay but the entire delay is summed into one key press itself. So if I were to program in the 0.1 second key press three times, that would put in one key press of 0.3 seconds delay. So this is going to be pretty simple, but let's say that I want to program a key press to open my web browser to youtube.com. So what we need to do is enter the keyboard into programming mode. And now we're programming the function Y key press. So we press that first. And now that we're programming that, we want to do control T to open a new tab. And then we want to set a, let's say 0.3 millisecond delay to wait for the tab to open. And then we go to youtube.com and press enter. Now that we have that programmed in, we press the program button to lock it in, exit the programming mode, and now if we press function Y, it will open a new tab in the browser and go to youtube.com. Just like that. So in addition to things like that, if I wanted to have, let's say, let's say I worked a lot with Adobe Premiere Pro and I have and I want to set one layer, so I want layer four to be, to be my Premiere Pro layer, I can actually program individual key presses on the keyboard to be different key combinations in Premiere Pro, so different editing key combinations. So rather than having to press Control, Shift, whatever, to, to enter into whatever mode that I'm doing, I can just program each key press to be control shift, whatever that key is, and then I just have to press that key once, and I, and I can have the other hand on my mouse and just uh, not have to worry about using both hands to do different key combinations, and I can save a lot of time. So finally, to bring in the last way of programming the keyboard or the last things that you can do, the poker has on the back these dip switches. So I can hold that in place. So as we can see, there are four dip switches and they're labeled one, two, three, and four. So the first two dip switches are used to switch the keyboard layout of the poker, which actually has uh, programmed into it both the, so QWERTY, which is the standard, uh, and then Colmac and Dvorak key layouts. So if that's your thing, it's really easy to switch to those. So to switch to Colmac, you would simply flip dip switch one and two on, and then it's in Colmac mode. If you were to switch 
have switch one on, but switch two off, then it's in Dvorak mode. And finally, the standard both switch one and two off is in QWERTY. So the first two dip switches aside, there are the, uh, th the third and the fourth. So if you switch the third dip switch on, all that does is turns the caps lock key into the function key. I personally am not a fan of using the caps lock key as a function key. I like to program the uh, caps lock key as the left control key. So finally, the fourth dip switch is used to reposition the program and function keys. Now, while you can't program the program and function keys themselves, you can move them to other key locations on the keyboard. So what I like to do is move the function key over to the left control key here. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch these keycaps. Now, when you reprogram the function key, when you move the function key, it permanently takes the place of the key that you move it to. So I'm going to be moving the function key over to the left control key. There will no longer be a left control key. So now because I am programming the left control to be the function key, I'm going to want to program another key to be my left control key first and that key is going to be the caps lock key. So I'm going to enter the programming mode. I want the caps lock key to be my left control key. The program that locked that in, turn that off. So now if I go up here and I press caps lock A, it acts as control A and selects everything. And now, since by default, the caps lock key is caps lock on both the default layer and the function layer, now if I hit function caps lock, it actually locks in the, uh, the caps lock. So moving the location of the function key and the program key is fairly straightforward. First, we take the keyboard and we turn on dip switch four. Now, you can see the lights here. We want to press the key, either the function, so this is still function, or the program key, whichever one we want to move. We press that key. You can see that the light here lit up. So if you have uh, LEDs on the camera, on the uh, keyboard, then all of them will light up. And then I want to press the key that I'm moving the function key to. And you can see the LEDs went off. So now I have reprogrammed the function key from here, its default location, over to the left control location. And then once I've done that, I simply switch off the dip switch, and now it's programmed. When you move the function and program keys, you only move them for that layer. So like I said, you can't reprogram the default layer, you can't move the function or program keys on the default layer. In order to move the function key, you have to move it on one of the programmable layers, and then you only move it per layer. So we can see, so we can demonstrate that by pressing the function key here and switching to layer three. And then if I press this as the function key again and want to switch back to layer two, see that doesn't work because now this is still the, uh, the default function key on layer three. So if I press that, then I can switch back to layer two. So that can get a little tricky, a little confusing, and that's where the uh, keyboard layout editor really comes in handy in uh, keeping track of where all of your different keys are. So finally, the last thing that you need to know where things can get a little tricky. So when you're programming key presses, the actual keys that you're pressing as the programmed combination of keys are strictly the default layer. So since I had reprogrammed the caps lock key to be my left control key, now if I'm programming some keys and I wanna press left control, and I wanna program some key to be left control something, I actually can't do that anymore because if I try to use the caps lock key, by default the caps lock key is caps lock, so it's going to program that as caps lock. But now the function, or the control key, the left control key is now my function key, and the function key has permanently overwritten that. So in order to do function anything while I'm programming keys, I have to use the right control.
So essentially you can't use programmed key combinations to program a key press. When you're actually selecting all of the keys to be part of that programmed key press, they are the default keys. So let's say I've reprogrammed F5 to be control S, and now I want to program function A to be F5. So if I'm programming function A and then I click function F5, it'll program the, F, the, the function A to F5 rather than control S. And that is basically how you go about programming the poker keyboard. All right, well, as always, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful. If I missed anything, if I said anything wrong, if, there any, uh, if there's anything uncertain, unclear, as always, let me know in the comments. I always try to respond to those. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna to continue to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button. As always, I am trying to uh, put out more and more videos and I've finally got kind of a, a whole system down to where I should be able to do that more often. I'll probably be putting out one or two videos a week moving forward. Again, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.